a playlist original. Hey, what's up? It's your host, Tori, and who is ready to be petty? Welcome back to another episode of RTPP. I am so glad you're here. I felt like saying it like that this morning because when I say it like that, it like sounds like Jeffree Star. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. And I just talked about him on the Patreon about Dramageddon 2.0 with Camp from what I will say. So if you haven't already, check out that episode. It's Easter weekend and I hope you're having a great long weekend. Even if you don't celebrate Easter, I hope you're eating a lot of chocolate. I hope you're getting rest and recuperation. I hope you're seeing friends and family. I'm off in Seattle living my best life, shopping at Trader Joe's and Target visiting some family so I hope you're doing something equally as cool (laughs) this week on the patreon I spoke to Diana True who is a pop culture commentator on TikTok and we talked about all of the Kardashian staff who have become influencers so Steph Shep, Makeup by Mario, Makeup by Ariel, Victoria and Chris Appleton and this coming week I'm talking to Nora from the State of the Union pod and we're talking Buffy. I am so excited. I don't think I've talked about Buffy too much in the like recent years but Buffy is one of my favorite TV shows and I feel like I used to reference it all the time. So we're going to talk about its cultural impact, its use of slang, its representation for lesbians on TV. We're just going to get into it all. I am so excited. Obviously, we're going to have the debate Team Angel versus Team Spike. It's going to be so much fun. And then the following week, I'm dissecting all of Katy Perry's pettiest moments with friend of the pod, Lindsay. And then the week after that, I think we're going to do casting almosts. So who was supposed to be in a movie or TV show and then they like dropped out? And I think I got this idea from my interview with author Janelle Brown because she had Nicole Kidman attached to one of her projects. But then on today's episode, I talk Barbie with Haley Strong and we're talking about how Margot Robbie was almost Amy Schumer. So that's going to be super, super fun. I want to shout out Olivia, one of our lovely patrons, our one of our heady Bettys. She is lovely she sent me this meme the other day that was an American girl doll that (laughs) was like we need an American girl doll who has purchased the ten thousand dollar dm from Emma Chamberlain and I was just like girl you know me so well so thank you so much Olivia for being a patron and Hannah R also very lovely you are one of my favorite Libras that I know and I don't take that lightly (laughs) thank you so much for supporting my work I appreciate you so so much Okay, friends, let's get to today's episode with Haley Strong. I feel like every time she's on this podcast, I talk about how cool she is and how she was, if not the second, the first podcast I ever listened to of the Bachelor Rehap Ups. And I was obsessed with her ever since. So that was like probably seven years ago. I think she started the podcast eight or nine years ago. And it is... I feel like such an honor to call her a friend and, you know, a collaborator on this podcast. And I feel like this conversation shows it. It was just like two friends talking. And I was like, oh, like we just recorded a podcast. So I hope you enjoy. Here is my conversation with Haley. I'm back with a very special guest, Haley Strong from The Bachelor Rehab Up and The Top Chef rehab up Haley how are you I'm great I'm first of all thrilled to be here second of all a little mad that I will not be able to listen to this episode because I'm on it um because (laughs) it's one of my favorite early week morning walk podcasts stop like literally crying in the club but (laughs) isn't that like isn't that so true though like sometimes I'm on my friend's podcast and then I'm like oh fuck now I can't listen such a bummer and, and it's funny because like I spend most of my time listening to your podcast being like 
I have to respond to her about this and be like, no, like yeah, I gotta dial it back. Too. Like I gotta dial it. <laughs> I can't be like pretending she's having a conversation with me and like live <laughs> messaging you my responses. You can. So many people do. And it's so nice. So it, like, at least now I get to like live my dream of live responding. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. Uh, you've been catching up on Summer House. Was that because of this podcast? I or am I just like making no it was it, it, it like was but what like what okay let me think about like why in particular because you had been talking about summer house and I was like I should yeah watch that but something oh you know what it was because I we're going back to Scandaval because yeah. of that I've been watching more watch what happens live and there is an episode mm-hmm. of watch what happens live with Rachel Lindsay who is a former bachelorette who I love and she was on with Amanda Batula and I was yes. like yes I got the time. I got the Hey You subscription. Yeah. Let's yes. get her started. Yeah. God bless Hey You. Holy Where, shit. Where, okay, Hey You, like, I, I need you to A, sponsor this podcast, B, sponsor my podcast, yeah. and yes. also give me free subscriptions for life because I swear to God, I recommend it to every person I meet. Same. It's the only place, I think, in Canada and Australia that you can get Bachelor content. And it's only six bucks a month. Like, it's the best. Hello, I'm doing the promo for free. Yeah, it's the best. <laughs> it, it, there's so there's so many shows. Yeah, yeah. But I am a little bitter that they don't have when there was Below Deck Galley Talk. Oh, okay. They didn't put that like spinoff on, so I was like a little salty about that. I like tweeted at them, but it's well, I remember. Otherwise, they're. I great. remember tweeting at them, like last season of Love Island, being like, "Hey, is Love Island going to be like on here episodically?" And they're like, "No." Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. we'll get it. Wait we'll get see. it after the season's over. And it's like, I it's impossible for me to not get spoiled on stuff like that, just because I spend truly too much time on the internet. Um, but this time they did have it episodic, but it was like maybe four or five days delayed, but it was like better than usual. Yeah. So I was like, Hey, you know, good for them. But summer house. Yeah. And I like back in the day, I don't know if you're at this point in your Vanderpump rules watch, there's like a crossover episode. And I remember watching the crossover episode and being like, this is the worst thing I've ever seen in my entire life. So I just, yeah, like, it's not good. I just like <laughs> never went back to it, but I went back to it and I truly love it it is so good i've yeah. crushed I'm, I'm like halfway through season six and it's i don't even think it's been like a full three weeks honestly literally you're going through it so fast i just i have a pretty quiet job where like i can yeah. have something up while i'm working and so i just have it up for eight hours a day <laughs> yeah, i'm obsessed so. yeah i feel like summer house doesn't get its dues because it is I would say, like, my favorite reality TV show, like, in terms of, like, that type of content, like, obviously Survivor and stuff like that, but, like, non-competition mm-hmm. shows, it's it's Summer House. And I actually, like, do find the cast likable, which is not the case yeah. um, for, for VPR. Well, yeah, which is funny, because when I yeah. started watching Vanderpump Rules, everyone was like, I love this show so much, blah, blah, blah. And then I remember watching the first season and being like, who am I supposed to root for here? I don't like any of them. They're not, they're not likable people. And then like, once it like washed over me that that was the point, then it was like, okay, I can fully enjoy this now. Where Summer House, I actually like the people on it. I believe they're friends. I'm a sucker. I can't help it. And I, like, I really like pretty much everyone. Me too. Like there's a few exceptions and like, there's a few annoying people, especially like in the earlier seasons, but like Jordan and oh, Jordan is like he gave me the like the heebie-jeebies every time he appeared on screen. He's so creepy. But Vanderbump rules like so. Okay, like obviously because I'm in this pop culture sphere, I had known about Vanderpump Rules, and then Scandal happened, and I I was actually with Christy from X Knows All. We were in LA, and I like the news broke when we were at lunch, and the way that she reacted was like, oh, I actually need to watch mm-hmm. this because. She was like so invested in this couple. And then when we found out Tom was cheating, it was like devastating. So I was like, okay, if if she has like such a reverence for the show, like I'll dive in and like fully watch it. I fucking hate everyone. Mm-hmm. Like it's actually so you're right. I had to accept that they're all shitty people because it's 
like a show I've never seen before. Because I feel like there's always rootable characters on yeah, every there, show I there's watch. There's just not here. There's none. And because when I started watching it, it was probably at the time, like season maybe six or seven yeah. was airing IRL. And just like you hear like Stassi, 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 Stassi. So you expect her to be yes. the hero and you expect her to be likable and everyone but she is truly one of the most despicable people she is fucking awful i couldn't believe it and it's actually really interesting i feel like to watch as like a cultural like anthropologist because Mm -hmm. literally she like everyone dies for her like she's the classic like blair waldorf mean girl that everyone's like obsessed with and like follows without like blinking and I'm like, why? And I guess it's because she's, like, devastatingly beautiful. And, like, I don't know. She just has this confidence that you're like, oh, I really want you to like mm-hmm. me. But she's a piece she's of shit. Aw- <laughs> she's <laughs> awful. Like, she's so awful to her friends and everyone. It's just wild that she's been able to, like, turn that around and like become a brand in herself. And even, yeah. even after her, uh, she's had, like, multiple racism scandals like the one where she got fired was it was very bad but it was not the first like she literally posted a picture of herself in like an like a blazer and a hat being like nazi chic like and was just like lol yeah oh god because i'm currently reading her book off with my head or Mm -hmm. whatever for the patreon we're doing vpr books over there as our book club and it's it's like reading what I wrote in like English time. And she had a <laughs> ghostwriter. I know, but I was like literally who? Like it's so bad. And, and like you'll get you'll get to it, but when she's like writing the book on the show, she just like has her little laptop. She's like, I gotta <laughs> yeah. get all these pages to my editor. Like yeah. sure you do. Yeah, it's so interesting. But yeah, it's fun to like talk to you and the other patrons about like hey does like because she's like literally not in season three i'm like does she come back like i want to know why sheena and shay broke break up because i just watched the wedding like oh it's so (laughs) bad it's oh god i'm so excited sheena's like almost irredeemable after that really Mm. okay because i like like sheena now like sheena is ebbs and flows baby like she is like yeah oh and like once you once you kind of realize why saucy left and why she doesn't like sheena and why she's so mad that katie's hanging out with sheena like you'll be like oh god it's bad oh my god i'm so excited i don't i want you to yeah you can't but like even like the Jax taylor of it all like the stassi tattoo and then the carmen tattoo like people cannot write better Mm -mm. tv than this like this is another thing that i want to emphasize if you've never watched vanderbump rules or summer house it's like it's really good television and it's like absolutely wild vanderpump rules more than summer house but like it is everything you want in a tv show it it, yeah it's truly like if you're listening to this podcast and you don't watch vanderpump rules like the venn diagram for this podcast and vanderpump rules should be like a circle like that's a circle it is it is your interest i can promise you that yeah go get hey you or i'll send you my password yeah like Like, (laughs) Yeah, yeah, but um, so yeah. Bad. So I've just been rip roaring through Summer House, and it's just it does not feel like a sa- the same show that I'm watching in season six as it did in season one. I think that's fine. Yeah, um, yeah, but it just well, it's funny to see like who comes back to like I keep googling like Summer House Alex, and they're like yeah. obviously Alex. Yeah. Like, the scandal of Alex getting edited out of episodes. Like, yeah. Yeah. Dude, that's, a bit of a- that's so fascinating, though. But, like, because they... So, it's so weird because Summer House has such good casting, but then also such flop mm-hmm. casting. Like, Carl, Lindsay, Kyle. Like, all of those people, like, A-plus casting. And then they throw in people like Chris from season seven, uh, Alex from season six. Like, just these people that just, like... Come Jules one that are gone. <laughs> Jules, I know. Like, God bless her. I feel like there was some like weird racism shit going on with the cast, yeah. but like, yeah. But it was, 
it was tough times. Well, like, even the people who keep time. like showing up that I'm like, I know you. Like I messaged you the other day about because I watched Winter House and like yeah. Gabby was on a season of America's Next Top Model for literally yeah. one episode. And I was like, I know her. I know that's so crazy, uh, but I, I'm like that too. Uh, and then <laughs> the episodes I'm watching right now, Carl's introducing uh, Mackenzie to us. I'm like, this woman looks so familiar. So I Googled oh, where is she Love from? Island US. She was on two oh seasons Oh my God, of it. yes, yes. And then, okay, you also recap Top Chef. Yeah. And Maya's ex-boyfriend, or like ex-fiance was on Top yeah. Chef. And they like- Because they it's another Bravo property. Well, because it, yeah, it's a Bravo property. Right. They have like clips of it, which is yeah. hilarious yeah. to me. Yeah, it's all such a small world. That's even just like how on Vanderpump Rules, like there's people in the background that become like more main characters and like stuff like that. So that's what I like when it's like it is like a real group of friends or like mm-hmm. a real workplace or whatever. Are you going to watch Summer House Martha's Vineyard like from the I jump? Think so yeah, like I might as well. Yeah. What else am I yeah. doing? Yeah. yeah like, I'm, I'm very excited because... I feel like the concept of Summer House is so cool and it's like, why haven't they? I guess they did Winter House. It's a little cheesier, a little campier than Summer House, but I'm like, why haven't they like franchised yeah, this? Yeah, for sure. It's so easy to franchise. It's not like Vander, like it's not like you can as easily do like Van- Vanderpump Rules Miami. Although there was talks about them doing Vanderpump Rules Vegas with like, you will get there so they have a couple like lisa has a couple restaurants in like the hotels and there's this mm-hmm. one woman and i don't remember her name actually i turned i think she turned out to be a very bad person but she looks exactly like sheena mm. so and they like there was rumors that they were gonna base a spinoff off, off of her yes okay just wait back to like randos that pop up like stacy yeah. from the hills well well yeah. and sheena was in the hills was on the and hills so was t- yeah. and so was t- tom sandoval he was like one of the yeah the, the models the or whatever. models yeah like it's just so interesting i love that shit i don't know why but we I really have been do. watching reality tv for like far too long <laughs> i know it's getting i should i should not have been allowed to be watching it when i was oh same 100 percent. like i one of my friends uh emily rose just covered a shot at love with tila oh tequila sh- on her podcast been watching that. i was like how did i watch that at like age 10 like it's so bad the day okay so i remember the day my dad got a new tv and i was in grade nine and we could yeah. finally get like not like satellite but like satellite cable and, like, mm-hmm. I could get MTV and I could watch all of the shows that were on MTV. All my, it was like, like, a whole world had opened up for me. It was amazing. I know. I know. I love that. Yeah. It was, it was the same for me. <laughs> like, but look at us now. Like, oh, talk. You know, it's, I actually, a couple of years ago, I had talked to one of my university professors. He, um, my degree is in tourism development and, um, He's a tourism professor. So in 2021, he was doing a research project about people who had lost their jobs during COVID because they're in the hospitality <laughs> industry. And anyway, he yeah. he he said to me, he's like, I like in not a creepy way. Like I have been kind of like watching your tra- trajectory from afar and just seeing how cool it is. Like I know what a big bachelor in reality tv fan you were in university and now you have like the successful podcast that you've been running for years and years and years like it's just so cool that you were able to like take one thing and turn it into another and you know that's kind of what you've done here too so it's just like oh yeah like other people do see that it kind of has like worked out for me that yeah. um, you know i haven't given it up <laughs> Yeah, that's so true. Like we've like monetized yeah. it, so that's good. Well, it's like, like I re- like I one of my core memories is like staying up late watching like watching the stupid Super Bowl so I could watch the premiere of Survivor All Stars. Oh, of course. Like I was yeah. so excited, and now like one of the guys on that season, like I he like picked me out to like talk about the Bachelor on the internet. It's like such a weird like how did we get here kind of thing oh literally it's like 
it's a like a dream come true and i'm saying that in the most earnest yeah. like, way possible but like it's so true because like it was the same like my family all watched big brother like even when we were on like trips like in seattle and stuff like we mm-hmm. would tune in three nights a week like it was just such a it had such an impact on me like so it's so nice to meet other people that have the same you know passion for yeah, it Yeah, and like i i remember when ethan and i first started dating having to like break the news of like i need to tell you something I have a bachelor podcast he was just like what are you talking about what is a podcast and now he loves the bachelor so yeah yeah you've I've converted another one yeah (laughs) no it's amazing and I've always enjoyed the podcast I want to like quickly before we like dive into today, today's topics. What did you think of the Bachelor 27 finale? Because I feel like we on RCBP like I don't know we're like in this sphere but we don't cover it like mm-hmm. specifically but I just had the girls on from She's All Batch and we were talking about the finale and I'm like kind of like am I back in it again? Like did they pull me back in? Not Zach or anything mm-hmm. like that but just like I miss the like community. Yes. I feel yeah. like and that is, of the Bachelor. That is why I started watching The Bachelor. Basically, like I, I mean, I watched yeah. it when I was young. Like I remember watching Trista's season and everything. Yeah. But I remember like going through Tumblr and finding this blog that I was thought was so funny, and I like I was like I have to watch Bachelor because of this. And now like, uh, and that author was Mel got served who now I've, I've been friends with for over 10 years at this point. And like, we've met, we hung out in person and stuff. So it's, but I remember just like loving the community of it, loving the community on Twitter. Uh, I started, I was an RA. And so I started having bachelor nights in my residence. And like, that was what we did in the lounge every Monday. Cause I went to a school that was predominantly women. So the residence area I was an RA of, it was all it was all women. What school? What school did you go Mount to? Mount St. Vincent University. Deep cut. Okay, okay. That is a deep it's cut. Deep cut. Yeah. Canadian. <laughs> East Coast lore. University. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we'd sit in the lounge and like we'd gather every Monday and watch The Bachelor and have a great time. And so that has really, what's continued it was loving the community of it. The show I could take or leave. <laughs> yeah. Literally. Don't care about The Bachelor. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like hanging out. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, that's so true mm-hmm. though. Like, I just would rather die than watch an episode. But like, I'll still yeah. listen to your podcast. Like, I'll still watch all. Like, l- like look at all the memes. Like, go on. Like, watch Twitter just like explode every Monday night. Mm-hmm. Like, it's ridiculous. Yeah, and I did. I actually did like this season more than I was expecting yeah. to. Um, I, I do think The Bachelor is in kind of kind of like a growth era, I would say, um, just because for so long it was the only quote unquote respectable love show on TV. Like it wasn't yeah. like Mr. Personality or Date My Daughter, or like whatever. Um, but now it's not. And like it, you know, there's actually shows that have more love clout than the bachelor does i do think the firing of mike fleiss will hopefully take it kind of into that new era of you know appreciating Mm. the diversity of casting like let's have maybe less than 25 white people per season possibly maybe somebody who wears over a size four in jeans (laughs) possibly That's the, yeah, that should be Somebody I could share a pant with, perhaps. Yeah, (laughs) like, literally. Yeah, so, like, yeah, the the fact that it hasn't, like, really evolved from since it aired, but, like, I think they should be taking notes from VPR and Summer House because, like, those shows don't, I'm sure they're produced, but they don't seem produced, Mm -hmm. whereas, like, shows like the bachelor feel over well and i can like and I'm feel like, it if you cast the right people yeah yes, i can like you read can the edit i'm like okay this is like this is what's gonna happen yeah. and because ethan is a sweet summer child who hasn't been watching reality television for 25 years yeah he doesn't always yeah. pick up on those like 
this is going to happen because they did this that's I think one of the most fascinating things about The Bachelor is how there's like a a clean divide of the audience of like people that know and then people that just like don't know Mm -hmm. it's wild okay let's get into today's topics Haley and I before we recorded we're like it's fucking like a tumble weed is like rolling down the highway it's it's kind of been like a dark it's week been a dry in season. pop culture. Yeah. It's it's like the yeah. pop culture world is like feeding on our depression and it's giving yeah. us nothing because we're giving it nothing. Like, literally. I was talking to some listeners about how um, March was like the just the worst month for no reason. And um, I'm like, okay, well, like April is like our like we're entering q2 like let's fucking go then my car got towed on monday no. and I was just like, i'm like this is not it and yeah pop culture just not giving what it why did your car to get give. towed i parked it in a place that like had a sign that said no parking but like, what i'm supposed to read wait, that <laughs> yeah literally but i did have all intentions of moving it and then i just forgot and then like went to sleep and then it got towed in the morning it's such a, when it wasn't actually supposed to be there it's but, such a disorienting yeah. experience of like going and being like i know you were here where are you i know where the fuck are you i like walked out i was like where's my car i was like oh i must have actually parked it in the garage and then i was like oh no i really fucking did it and you just like, like panic it's the word yeah i'm like oh it's gone so bad so we're gonna still have fun we're gonna I wanna oh, say yeah, that. Yeah, everyone's yeah. like everyone's like oh <laughs> we're here for a good time and a long time so <laughs> yeah truly we're gonna talk about till death do us part the new uh kravis special wedding special we're gonna talk about barbie and our sephora sale wish lists and then I didn't even ask you pre-show. Do you have a petty weight champion of the week and of this week? Yeah, I've been thinking about them. They have they're okay, they're perfect. they're here and they're here. I had okay, in my heart perfect. for the the non-audio <laughs> for the non-video <laughs> listeners. So Haley will nominate a petty weight champion of the week and share her this week in petty. Okay, are you a big Kardashian girly? Not really. It's just like yeah. it hits me. Like I know everything that's happening just because it like. I'm caught in the wave of it all, but like I don't yeah. actively participate in any Kardashian thing. Do you have a fave Kardashian? Like, if you had to choose, that's a great question. I feel like if I had to had to pick, it would be Courtney. But I'm also yeah. just like girly. It's like let's. I just want them to have more personality. I think. Like, Courtney yeah. and Chloe do all of the heavy lifting from the personality front. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah, I definitely have gone in, like, waves of being, like, annoyed at Courtney, but I'm kind of, like, enjoying her. I'm enjoying her, like, cheesy, lemmy ads. I'm enjoying her ASMR on TikTok. Like, I kind of was craviced out, but now I'm, like, back in. And they announced yesterday that they're doing a big special for their three weddings, one of them that was like basically sponsored by Dolce and Gabbana. And it brought me back to 20, I think 11 when I watched the Kim and Chris wedding special on E. Yeah, I would have to say like, I I don't even know if there is a time in my life where I like actively even watch the show. But I do remember one time it was on in the lounge in university. And I think I just like mm-hmm. went out and sat down. And it was on because some of the other girlies were watching it. And then he didn't move for four hours. And then yeah, I just never yeah. watched it again. Yeah. Okay, I feel like if you were to need a TV show to watch it during work, like this would be it. Because you could like leave and then come back and just be like, oh, they're still like shaking their salad. Yeah. And like, I think it was like Kim and Chloe take Miami or whichever of the two sisters were oh, taking Miami. Like yeah. that was the iteration of it that I was watching. And I was like, and I was like I can't. those were actually okay. good the spinoffs were way better than like the regular show it's not like I'm a Kardashian hater I'm not I'm not that I'm just not like I'm I'm Kardashian and agnostic yes Kate th- this is interesting to me though do they come up on your feed like your for you page and stuff like no, that no I've gotten north a few times and I've gotten yeah Penelope a few times but I don't not, like none of the None of the adults. That's so Mm -hmm. wild. I cannot imagine an internet that doesn't have the A lot of my TikTok for you page is like 
knitted frogs with cute little sweaters. Um, <laughs> yeah. Pasta. Yeah. 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 Actually, I'm on what was going to be my this week in petty was going to be people who do like happy dancers over their depressing stories on TikTok. Like I can't <laughs> stand it. Being like, yeah, yeah. I got evicted from my apartment. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody, maybe I'll clip this for a video. But Haley's doing like the renegade. I, it drives me. <laughs> it drives me bananas. And like I find TikTok to be a little too trauma dumpy. It's like you don't yeah. need to tell us everything. That's not. For, yeah. That's I don't need to know that. And I also want. I hate these videos because I also just want you to tell me the point of your story. Yeah. This is this is so bad, though. I've gone to an attention span where it's like if they don't start the story in like five seconds, I fucking I'm out. scroll. Yeah. I don't think that's a bad yeah. attention span thing. I think that's a bad storytelling thing on their part. You don't have me hooked. That's yeah. on you. Not, not on me. <laughs> that's on you. Yeah, that's true. This really sweet lesbian couple from Norway who mm. I'm, I am rooting from, for them. Mm-hmm. But I don't, I don't need them to dance from a car or like a parking garage about like their pregnancy and stuff. Like I'm happy for them. I want all, I want everything good for this couple. It's yeah. absurd to me that people are dancing over their trauma or like there's the one woman who has like this mansion who's like, I have five kids and my husband left me like. Yes, Kate is sweet. Yeah, Taylor Jenkins or whatever from mormon mom tiktok when she was like dancing being like my husband and i split custody of our kids and i was like i i actually can't like i actually cannot watch this what does our world come to you can tell me the depressing story or dance but when you do both it makes the depressing story just seem absurd yeah absolutely my god so i'm assuming you're not going to be watching this special i don't think so i think i will like again if there's clips probably watch them on youtube yeah um but we canceled our disney plus subscription so like i'm not gonna be like actively seeking this out yeah that's fair i'm just really excited to see like the uh, extravagant wedding like i don't even care about the people at this Mm -hmm. point i just want to see like their like beautiful like a beautiful event i just yeah i like I like looking at nice things. Um, yeah. And then, so what is it coming out? Literally, I've oh, Okay, yeah. cool. I wasn't <laughs> sure if it was, like, coming out before the new season. Because I know you had mentioned a I couple weeks so. ago on the podcast being like, are we going to get, like, this wedding a content, like, three. a full year after the wedding? Like, Yeah. This is the thing. They should have done the wedding special last, like, July. They got married in June, I think. Or at least the Italian yeah. wedding was in June. They should have done the special in, like, July or August. And well, then... the iron was still hot. Exactly. And, and season three comes out... Uh, again probably this spring and actually I think it comes out in like six weeks it's like a pretty quick turnaround time but they've started filming it like through the fall and I was like Ugh, I just like I'm not interested mm-hmm. at all they just can't seem to get on like the immediacy that I need like with VPR they're like still or they were still filming shit and it'll air like this coming month or yeah. whatever right yeah I need that okay let's talk about Barbie did you play with Barbies as a yeah. kid? Yes. <laughs> was I a human? Absolutely, I did. Were they like the toy that you liked? I would say, yeah. I would say yeah. that. Was I, like, I think me too. I liked cutting their hair. I liked coloring them. Um, yeah. I had all the Spice Girl Barbie dolls. That was like the highlight oh of my, my life. I Yeah, I really liked them. I had like a Barbie house. I loved it. Me too. I had a Barbie house. I had the Posh Spice Barbie, which was like everything I ever wanted. Um, I had the Jasmine Barbie. And I remember my sister, I think you could put it back on, but like she was mad at me and she like pulled the head off or like pulled the like <laughs> legs off or something. And I was like, oh my God, this is Demonic. like traumatizing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had the Mulan Barbie and my mom saved her Barbies from like, she was born in 56. So let's say like you know, late 50s 
early 60s and we got to play with those two. So So much fun. My mom gave our Barbies to like another family when they were moving. They moved in November and my sisters and I were like oh you're gonna like get those back right and she's like no and we're like are you fucking kidding me? (laughs) Like that would have been something we wanted to give to like our kids. In the same vein when my parents were moving a couple years ago my mom was like you need to fucking take this tote of stuffies out of yeah, my house yeah, and put it in your yeah. house I was like, yes. okay like i like <laughs> didn't actually want them in my space but i couldn't i was like mom you shouldn't even have even told me this existed because now i like cannot emotionally mm-hmm. like go of any of these so for a while they the bin was in my car and my old car the back um driver's side door didn't lock it just it just didn't and then one fateful day I, I go out and the stuffies are like strewn throughout the car I was like I've been robbed because like somebody broke into my car expecting this tote to have some great stuff in it but it was just grody little stuffies <laughs> so they oh didn't my god that's so them. funny and so I was like oh they didn't rob me of anything like cool 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 And then nine months later, when I was going to buy a new car and I needed, like, um, my ownership to transfer over ownership, I realized they had stolen all of my papers out of my (laughs) apartment. (laughs) But no No stuffies, stuffies, thank God. The stuffies are safe. They're in my basement. I, like, cannot (laughs) physically let go of stuffies. Oh, yeah. I know. Same. I have, like, boxes and boxes of, like, mementos. Like, I literally pay for, like, a storage unit in my building that's just, like, you know, stuff from when I was a kid. But yeah, the Barbie house and the Barbies not not getting those back. But I definitely think they were like one of our favorite toys, too. And then I remember in elementary school, like finding out like, oh, they're like problematic. Like (laughs) I do not need to strive to have like a 12 inch waist or whatever. And like big old titties and. Yeah. Yeah. The Barbie body type that like never (laughs) happening for me. (laughs) Literally, I remember, like, seeing, I like, an infographic, but it was, like, almost like a meme where it was, like, if Barbie was, like, in, like, real life, she couldn't, like, hold up her head. And I was, like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, yeah, that was, yeah, the <laughs> Barbie outrage, um, once we realized, like, oh, it's actually, like, bad to promote bad body, body image. And now yeah. I'm thinking about it, I'm, like, was Barbie really, like, the worst offender of this? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Did you look at a Bratz doll and you go, that is the ideal body type? I wanted to look, I wanted to look like a Bratz doll so bad. (laughs) I'm not even joking. Not necessarily the body, but I was like, oh my God, they're like hot. They're like, (laughs) like, they look so like mature. They have highlights. Yeah, I'm like, look at that like eyeshadow and like big lips and like a beauty mark above your lip. They wear so much This is the look. Yeah, (laughs) and those like weird hats oh my god <laughs> yeah I don't know I don't know how that that like affected me I'm sure it was like not I great, started but... watching them okay like going back to like me watching a lot of reality tv I started watching yeah. America's Next Top Model at like 13 that was <laughs> yeah. way worse for me than the Barbies <laughs> yes. literally so fucking bad like nothing could be worse Oh my God. Uh, yeah if I want to look to like where any body image issues started it was America's Next Top Model beginning and end <laughs> yeah. yeah literally that's so funny so Greta Gerwig a very I don't know prestigious director is releasing Barbie this spring I feel like everyone's so excited like no one no movie that I've seen in the in such a long time has got this much buzz i agree and i feel like when we first got like the press shots of it um everyone was like really excited and i didn't want to get my hopes up too high because it just i don't know sometimes when things are like overhyped it just you know i go eh. but i am really excited about this and i watched the trailer and my husband watched over my shoulder and he was like giggling too i was like oh like are you gonna go see this with me he's like yeah like absolutely he's a movie guy i'm not i watch i watch like two movies a year Same. so it's like Same. hard to find a movie that we both would be willing to go see and this is one of yeah. them because there's a lot of people in it that i like and i'm really excited about that me too so the cast is ryan gosling obviously as ken the at least twitter is like ripping on him saying he like looks old 
no yeah i was like shut the fuck up <laughs> like he looks so good yeah. <laughs> like uh, Margot Robbie as Barbie. Also, she like is the She's perfect so Barbie. Perfect. It's it's like insane. It was actually originally supposed to be Amy Schumer, but I think that the movie went in like a different direction, and she was like, "This like is not for me." That's fair. I can't imagine it not being Margot Robbie. I know she's so good, and it's just like I feel like we knew Margot Robbie, Robbie, and we knew Ryan Gosling, but then like these previews were coming out, and all of the people were like, "I was like that that person, that person, that person, what?" Yes, and I was really, really, yes. really excited. Yeah, so there's like Issa Rae, she's like the president Barbie, and Simu Liu, who is another Ken, Michael Sarah, who's Alan. Kate McKinnon, who would have been your Barbie, the one with the cut hair and the, <laughs> the like marker all over the face and like permanently in the splits, yeah. which is like so fucking funny. Um, Dua Lipa is like the mermaid Barbie. It's God, it's everything that I could ever hope for. Which Barbie would you be? Probably like the sad sack Barbie. <laughs> Like wearing sweatshirts with stains on it, like a half, like a half empty Starbucks cup that I should have water in, but I only have Coke in, Coca Cola, not cocaine. Wearing one sock at all times, hasn't worn a hard pants in three years. This is why I feel like we're like kindred spirits, because that is me too. But have my cat under my arm, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's so funny. I definitely thought you were gonna be like, because it's like you know, nurse Barbie, like exercise workout Barbie, like dinner date Barbie. I thought you were gonna choose one of those. No. Like, yeah. Like, Oh my god, that's so fucking funny. I definitely like again. This I feel like this is a hard, uh, deep cut, but like I would have been like Midge. Do you remember? Do you remember well, like the, I like, like I saw the clip. Wait, was Midge like the one that was like redhead and pregnant, or is that different? No, Midge is just like I feel like the like loser. Oh. Like just say, was it Midge or was it? I don't know. Else? I don't remember it, man. <laughs> my mom also had a barbie named okay this is definitely just her not anybody else i think (laughs) but because i was like oh this is definitely like a like a version of barbie oh no it is 2d 2d and todd she had 2d and todd but like i feel like there's like barbie who is like the hot popular like all-star grades and then there's like the loser cast like the side people like midge and i feel like that would be me Midge is a bad name just subjectively i know well like obviously these were like in the like 40s 50s yeah i i've just had like a memory come back to me and that's like my grandmother had signed me up for a book subscription and it was like yeah barbie books where they all had like stories and like pictures to go along with it like that was those books were like where i learned the concept of a guide dog because super was like training guide dogs skipper <laughs> skipper and then oh kelly, my god I think kelly was the little yes master. kelly yes oh my god it's like a walk down memory lane yeah maybe i'm like maybe i'm skipper because i was like oh she has like flat feet like she can't wear the high heels <laughs> like, <laughs> she's like a true five four <laughs> yeah. loves an overall so funny yeah. Were you like everyone's talking about the um shot in the trailer of like the foot coming out of the shoe? Were you like stoked about that? I, I did like I thought it was funny. Like I did like the commitment to the bit. Me too. I just think that they've put a lot of like time and effort into like getting it right. Yeah. And I really appreciate that when people do like a play on like, you know, classic I don't know. Yeah. Things. Like, I, yeah, when they try and like prey on nostalgia without like doing a good job, where even like I was reading that Alan was like a one time release where he was like Ken's yes. best friend, and like even the shirt yes. like Michael Sarah's wearing is correct. Because this is what I hoped for for Riverdale. Oh. A show. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like to be a good version of Archie, like the Archie yeah. comics. And then it was just like the complete opposite. So yeah, I'm I'm stoked for this. There's all of the cast pictures that are coming out where it says like this Barbie is blah, blah, blah. What would your tagline be? Oh, gosh. This Barbie is 
snackish. Yeah. <laughs> Barbie needs a snack. Yeah, I think that would be it. I love that. Okay, I need to make some of these for this episode <laughs> promo. Make sure you pick a hot picture of me. Yeah. Please. I will. Um, mine would be, yeah, like this Barbie needs 16 hours of sleep or like, or like this, this Barbie, Barbie wants to talk shit Lexapro. or something. Yeah. 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 Oh my God. Yeah. This Barbie, um, has a diet Coke addiction. Mm-hmm. Um, something like that. Okay. I'll make these. I for can't wait. Insta. I can't wait. Insta. And like, there's some, there, my fa- okay. My favorite deep cut of casting is this man named, uh jamie dimitru and i don't even know what role he plays but he's in this show called staff let's flats and it is truly an unhinged piece of television it's on cbc gem it's like a british like comedy oh, it's yeah on it's like it if you like the office like that first season where like michael scott was just like genuinely awful you would like staff let's flat so like that is my Oh my god, he was on Fleabag. Sure, yeah, probably. Oh yeah, probably. I haven't watched Fleabag yes. yet. I'm like five years behind on everything. Seriously, but like, also, if you're a depressed girly, like, just don't bother watching. Well, that's it. the thing. Like, I've like, yeah, I've had, yeah, I've had normal people on my sh- my physical bookshelf for like four years now. Oh no, 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 no. I read that in like March 2020. Oh no, and watched the TV show. It was. I was never worse. Like, I'm, but I'm like, want to be a Paul Mezcal girly. I know. I just am. Just I just want him to pick a project that I would like. Yeah, 100%. Maybe actually Fleabag tie in. He's doing a movie with um the main character from Fleabag, not oh. the woman, the the priest. Oh, um, oh what's what's his it, what is his name? Andrew Scott. Oh, okay. They're like lovers in like a new movie. You'll oh probably my God. Like okay. One, I, I do love like. that. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, so staff. What is staff it called? Let's Flats. Staffless Flats. Let's. Okay, let's. That's like, a- um, it, that's oh. like instead of renting in uh the UK, it's letting. Oh, yes. Yes. So it's, a, it's an unhinged oh show. And also CBC Jam is horrifically underrated. It is. It is a mm-hmm. it's a great app. It's free. You do have to watch some commercials, but it's great. That's true. But sponsor us, like CBC seriously. Jam. Call call us, please. Yeah, that's how I watch Survivor the day after oh, great. because I don't have cable. So yeah, and also uh, really- Nicola Coughlin, who I adore, is in yes. this from Dairy Girls oh, and also Bridgerton. And Bridgerton, yeah. Again, oh gosh, this okay. is me. This is me segueing into like I swear to God, if season three of Bridgerton comes out and you talk about it on the podcast and I'm not present, I'm mad. I'm big mad. Yeah, I can't. big mad. Okay, we'll do. I feel like you, me, and Kirsten Great. should do a. Oh well, she has a Bridgerton. Uh, she'll podcast. come to this one. Yeah. I'm gonna answer that for her. She okay, will attend. Okay, we'll, okay, we'll do like a big yeah. special of just like a full on. I think this is her favorite book, so I think she'd be more than willing to do multiple podcasts about it. Okay, perfect. Okay, I love that. Okay, let's talk about the Sephora sale. Are you like always a Sephora? You are because you're into. You're super into makeup. Yeah, I wish I wasn't an annual Sephora VIB, but I am. Yeah. I can't help it. Can't help it. That's so fun. Okay, tell me what's on your wish wish list. I want to know from like an expert. Okay, so I have a couple refills. So mm-hmm. I think I think you use this too, actually, the Bloom Meltdown Oil. Oh my god, no, Kirsten's okay. been trying to get me. She bullied <laughs> me. me like, she bullied me into it. Is it okay? Is it good? Not that I wouldn't follow her. Like, I don't know re- if it like rec. works, but I just keep buying it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. I so I had a bottle of the pharmacy makeup melt or oh, whatever, yeah. and then uh an inky list oat cleanser. I hate the inky list oat cleanser. I hate it. I don't like it either, but like I had bottles. It like left a yes. film on my yes. face, but I am the type of person that I'm like, I need to finish yes. both of these before I buy something. And I then I will buy the bloom stuff. Yeah. It's taken me like two years to get through the, Honestly, <laughs> the oat I cleanser. Got, I got this one Sephora pack for Christmas and I love their gift sets but I got the same gift set from two different people which is fine because it had like 
like the the ordinary hyaluronic acid it had that in it yeah. and like that is what I use for my hyaluronic acid so I was like great I'm yeah, happy uh anyway so I had like two bottles to get through and it was like at the end I was like whoosh, like squirting up yeah, so yeah. much just be like I'm <laughs> finishing this little bitch <laughs> yeah and then so I have my usual night cream which is the Sephora collection firming night cream with peptides I really like the Sephora collection oh, nice. stuff the only yeah. thing is they discontinue products so often it's hard to find a favorite and then have it like discontinue yeah that's brutal like they had a really nice cleanser I liked for a while but then they discontinued it I have a Glossier bomb.com lip balm since bite beauty has died um their lip masks were my favorite just like bomb to have so I'm hoping that I'll like the Glossier one especially I haven't tried a whole lot of Glossier yeah not before this year definitely or like the past whatever when it started popping up at winners I started being like you're oh, coming home sick. with me oh I didn't know that because like also for like Canadian people like it only came to Sephora like a month yeah. ago yeah so I haven't tried any of their products but I feel like I like have to try the like cloud paint and the bomb.com yeah. and like just their like viral products but yeah and I was like okay am I gonna get a black if I'm getting a blush am I gonna get a cloud paint or am I gonna get a rare beauty blush yeah and I have the rare beauty blush on my list um yeah I want to try the particular color I really wanted is has been out of stock for a while but honestly it's like a purple and I think I was just getting it because I don't have anything quite like it I think I'm gonna get like a peachy orange color um as long as that doesn't sell out and then I also had one of the new lip oils on my list but it sold out oh, yeah. and then it restocked and now I'm seeing it sold out again. Yeah. Which is fine because yeah. I like I should only get one lip product because I genuinely I have so many lipsticks. I can't even show you because it's like genuinely embarrassing of how many lipsticks I have. And I did a really good vanity clear out last week and really had to like think about what I actually needed, which is truly nothing. But I just I have a gift card from Christmas for Sephora, so that's gonna be like that's what's going to purchase the blush that I know I don't need, but whatever. Okay, just wait. Do you um wear, because I know you're like, yeah, you wear like a bold lip and stuff. Do you even do that from work with work from Not home? Not really, no. Yeah. No, so I like genuinely don't need to be wearing. Yeah. <laughs> like owning it. I like made a promise to myself though. Like I literally can never buy another eyeshadow palette for the rest of my life. Like, there's just nothing I, I need. That. And also, I'm, like, over 30 now, so my eyelids are just, like, falling in on themselves. Yeah. So it's, yeah. like, you can't even see the eyeshadow anyway. I'm fucking dead. Oh, my God. That's so funny. Oh, my God. Okay, on my list, I put this on, and then I was, like, are you fucking psychotic? I'm going to take it off immediately. But I've been looking for a vitamin C serum that doesn't, like, ruin my face. And I was like going the cheap route. Like I had the ordinary one, and it I, would like is it the, burn. It, yeah, I hated it because that I that yes. I got in a set last year. It's like in the like in a squeezy tube. I had yes, to like, it's the vitamin C plus HA. I hated it. I had to like whatever. mix it with moisturizer because a it Same. burned and b it like felt like grainy. <laughs> it felt so grainy, and I like this is normal. It's also normal if your face burns off. And I was like, okay, but like. Again, why did I continue to use it? I'm like, you could just throw I it know, out. I know, I had like, to finish it. <laughs> I'm like, it's $7 or whatever. I know, like, but I had I to finish it. it I had to get the satisfaction of finishing it. I just replenished a vitamin C and I did what I always do with vitamin C, which is like go to Winners and buy the $10 vitamin C. Whatever brand is there, oh, just buy it. Yeah. Like, yeah, because then I got the Sephora collection one and I was like, okay, this doesn't burn off my face, but I feel like it's doing nothing. Yeah. Like, it's actually doing nothing. So I'm like, I'll finish this and then try something new. And then I got a a facial last year, and they used all Dermalogica, like, products. And I bought the pre-cleanse that they used, and I really liked their, like, SPF. But they had a vitamin C called Biolumin C. And I was like, hey, I'm going to do it next, like, Sephora sale. No, Tori, it's like a hundred and ninety. Like not a chance. <laughs> I'm like I'm like, not pretty enough what? to like justify spending that kind of money on skincare or like makeup. It's just like 
girl, you got to be real, realistic. Like, what are we doing? I know. And there's like some like L'Oreal, like Revitalif, like vitamin C's that I feel like have been on like Derm Talk that are like probably just as good. But that's on my like real wish list. But, like if somebody yeah. if like a sugar daddy is listening and wants to send you yes and like gifts it yeah. to me exactly I also want to get the super goop glow screen I was really like anti like I wanted out of my sunscreens like to be transparent like nothing like unnoticeable but then literally I saw one TikTok of my friend Maddie from parked car convos and she was wearing this super goop glow screen. And I was like, I'm buying it. It looks so good on you. It just gives like a sheen that I now want. I don't yeah, know. I'm having a really hard time finding a face sunscreen because like either they're like a mineral sunscreen and it like gives you the most insane white cast of your entire life or like yeah. it just breaks me out. Yeah, it's tough. I'm going to Seattle this weekend and I'm going to buy the Trader Joe's. Dupe oh, yeah. See, the, I wanted that one, but it was dupe. sold out. It was sold out. But hopefully they'll have it uh, back again this season. Yeah, I hope so. So we'll see how those go. And then I really want a Fenty Beauty Matchsticks Shimmer Skin Stick. Ooh. It's like kind of like a highlighter. But again, I saw one of my colleagues wearing it. And I was like, okay, this looks like gorgeous on you. So I just... I don't know. I feel like those are the best recommendations when you like see it on mm-hmm. people and you're like, oh my God, what is that? I agree. I'm also going to refill because this is amazing that we also now have Paula's choice. In Sephora, I'm going to refill my like AHA, BHA, like exfoliant or whatever. It's exciting. And like, I'll probably scroll through the sales section because I feel like during the sale, they also put a lot of good stuff in the sales section. I know. Or like those kits. God, I like, love a kit. T- I'm such a whore Me for too. a kit. I can't help Me it. Me too. Me too. It, it's actually a problem. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, I love like the first aid beauty kits. Oh, or yes. like I actually like yeah. had multiple kits with the like first aid beauty lotion in it. Um, mm-hmm. And then a couple years ago, Ethan had gotten me like a first aid beauty kit for christmas i didn't even ask him for it he just like saw the many things in the shower uh, and he he bought it anyway it came with like a big tub of the cream so i finally just finished the tub of cream so then i took all the other creams and just like squeezed them into the tub so they could like come out of my like the closet of back stocks yeah yeah I know I've got a bin of like a rubber made of back stock it's so I know bad. I'm like I'm not allowed to do this anymore unless it's like something where I'm like okay like this is it this is what I use like whatever. yeah but... yeah I know I'm like I'm not an influencer I'm not Michaela Nagara no, I, know. Like, I don't need this and I'm like... so easily influenced I can't help it me too and TikTok has been the absolute yeah. worst for like skincare and beauty I feel like because I just like buy everything Okay, let's move on to Pettyweight Champion of the Week. This is the part of the show where our guest is going to nominate a Pettyweight Champion of the Week. Someone in the media who did something petty and it was iconic. Haley, who are you nominating this week? I am nominating Ariana Maddox's reunion revenge dress as Pettyweight Champion Love of it. the Week. Yeah, <laughs> iconic. So, yeah, VPR reunion stills were released by bravo this week i feel like super early mm-hmm. but i was living for i them. think they're trying to like do as much as they can to keep up the hype before like b- because the reunion's still like a bit away so i think i saw that it's going to be three episodes and it's going to be like the last three weeks of may which is like pretty far away yeah. and like we are a month out from the scandal which seems like it, it seems like we've lived a lot of life in that month with the yeah. scandal, but, um, you know, trying to keep people hyped or even interested in the episodes that are airing now without being like, well, what do I care about this for? Like, it's relevant. But yeah, so they released the pictures and Ariana was like the first still everybody's like put mm-hmm. up. Um, she's in this like really beautiful, I don't know, um, uh, dress where it's just like a stripe across the titties and a stripe like across the, the stomach and then like a nice skirt. And actually it seems like a lot of celebrities have worn a variation on this recently. Um, mm. It's not something I would ever choose to wear, but it looked great on her. Me and neither. I think that's exactly like what she was going for. Yeah. It had like a structured like shoulder and 
it was bright red and she had like tons of rings on her hands which was good because I was like you couldn't wear a necklace with this dress Mm -hmm. so it was the right move she looked really good but I saw a lot of discourse online about how she was gonna sit through a reunion taping with this dress on I feel like she'll be fine this isn't yeah. her first rodeo. That's true. Because I was like, oh, my God, the gaping. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, it's yeah. probably, they, they'll probably like have a hair clip pinning it back. Yeah. Yeah. That's super, super smart. Yeah. And then there was like other looks, but none that like super caught my eye. No, I was pretty disappointed in the looks, actually. Like, I think Katie is so stunningly beautiful. And she's like, she is. has such like a gorgeous shape. And she just wore this like mullet dress oh my god I know and I was like the high-low dresses haven't been in style since like 2013 like high-low and fringe at the same time I know I know it was so tragic Lala's I just thought it was like pretty tacky it was like a yeah shiny leopard print just wasn't my thing I thought Allie's was pretty I thought Raquel's like it was just a little shapeless and she's like I don't know I see a lot of people making fun of her for always wearing that seafoam green, but I like it's a great color. She's a, I do think she's really pretty. I like her short hair, but it's just like you could do better here. You could do better. Yeah. I, I don't know if you've come across it, but Raquel's dress from her first reunion, it's probably a couple mm-hmm. seasons down the road. I need you to hold hold that in your mind <laughs> when you see it and please text me when you eventually see this dress you'll know it'll like you'll see it and it'll be like i have to text Haley. okay okay i'm so excited i like want to like look it up but it's not just the green ones coming up on google yeah i just thought that it it's a beautiful dress but when people are wearing like literal ball gowns and then you show up in like kind of like a more cocktail dress Mm -hmm. i feel like it looks like just like not matched i thought she looked good and then the guys like were wearing suits like Tom shorts pulled on whatever dirty t-shirt was beside him and then like a yeah suit. I feel like people like Tom Schwartz and I'm like I fucking he's hate the him. worst he's he's actually the worst he's so bad I don't know how anyone likes no, him I'm like sucks. okay yeah sure he's cute but like he's I hate him so much Okay, finally, it's time for this week in Petty, where Haley's gonna share a story about something that happened in her real life that she's petty about. What are you petty about this week? I'm petty this week and for the last probably six months that Taylor Swift has not announced her Canadian dates yet. Oh, my God. The way that I would drop my Seattle tickets like a hot hot potato if she announced uh, Vancouver dates is wild. But it also makes me so anxious because it's like, am I even going to get tickets? Because like... uh, the American dates were like the Hunger Games. And like, I know, how would I, I know. like how, I don't even understand how people got tickets. Like I can't, I, I can't wrap my head around it. I don't know what happened. I don't know how to be a part of that process. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. It was really bad. So I think, I think we got them. It was November 16th. <laughs> like I remember the date. Mm-hmm. And I went to my friend's apartment, Dana, and we were, like online for like the 10 a.m. And then they, you know how they pushed them all back because it had gone so off the rails. So then we came back at like three, but then I had to leave for some reason, probably work or something. And she like went through the process solo. So I don't even like know either. Like was she like filling out quizzes on Ticketmaster to become like a verified fan? Like I don't even understand. Well, she wasn't our other friend that I'm going with. I'm going with three girls. They've all been on this pod, Dana, Courtney, and Lisa. And Lisa was the only one of us four that got verified fan. Like, how do you even get it? Uh, how do I prove? I have no idea. Like, I literally, yeah. I have been listening to Taylor Swift for over half my life at this point. The first time I saw yeah. Taylor Swift, it was at a state fair, like outside <laughs> of Buffalo, New York. <laughs> For forty dollars, where I also got yeah. to go see some prize-winning chickens, like before the yeah. show. Yeah, you only had one album to play. Literally. I didn't even have a driver's license yet. Like I saw a TikTok yeah. the other day. It was like, how old was I when the albums came out? And it was like, um, like debut, like not born, like. What? Yeah. I was like, <laughs> yeah. you don't get to go. 
You don't get to go to eras if you haven't been alive for the eras. Eras. I know. I know. I just feel like there's a lot of people that are there that are just like, oh, it'll be like a good show. I'm becoming one of those 50s that's like, people don't deserve to be there. I know, but it's also like, why were tickets so hard to get this time around? Like, I've been, I've seen Taylor Swift a few times and it's never been this difficult. Yeah, I think because that, all that verified fan business, because I think the same thing kind of happened with Harry Styles and like, Adele or I don't know I don't know someone else and I'm hoping that they don't do the same process for Canada and in inter- other international dates but this is the problem that I think I think she's gonna announce UK Asia or Australia or like Europe Asia and Australia tickets before Canada because like those places have the big stadiums for the show she's yeah doing. or even if she like comes to Canada yeah because like the biggest stadium in Canada is like the Rogers Center and like with a concert the capacity is like 40,000 or something like that mm-hmm. which is like how many half yeah. of what she just did in like Arlington Texas. Yeah. yeah is that the one in Vancouver no you guys have a different Rogers Center. You have Rogers okay, Arena. Yeah. Yes, we have Rogers yes, Center. You right. guys have Rogers Arena. Yeah. Yeah. That's not confusing at mm-hmm. all. Yeah. But if she went to Rogers Arena, that is what, 20,000 people? But BC Place is a lot more, yeah. I feel like. Yeah. Capacity 18,000 for hockey people, 19,000 for concert. So let me see BC Place. Like, she's not going to go to a place that's... Like, 20,000 tickets. like 20,000 people. BC Place is 54,000. Okay. So maybe she would go to BC Place. But then she's going to have to do, like, four nights to make up for one I know. night somewhere else. I know. That's why, like, a lot of people were complaining but about the stadium size and, like, dates and stuff like that. But... Or, like, where she was going. But I was like, it has to be the stadium yeah. capacity. Like of these places. So it does like make sense because she has played what four weekends of shows, three weekends of shows. She's already played for half a million people. That's bananas. Yeah. Cause I'm following all the like eras tour like updates. I know. On it's Twitter. just like getting me angry and I can't, like I'm trying to be chill, but I just can't. I know. I know. Every Friday, Saturday, I've been like on Twitter, like, or like, watching the show on tiktok someone's like always live streaming it and then like i'm waiting for the surprise songs and like people are updating their spreadsheets like it's nuts do you prefer the surprise song or the surprise guest i feel like surprise song because i feel like whoever she pulls out it's funny i don't like love any of her like associated acts i know that's gonna get me like hate but i'm not like a diehard like Bonnie Vare girl or like Phoebe Bridgers or anything like that. I should be. I know I should During be. During 1989, do you remember she'd have like a like yes. Nelly came out and like Haim came out. Yes. And then during the one yes. I went to, it was Keith Urban. And I think the night before or after us was like Charlie XCX or something like that. Yeah. I think I yeah. prefer that than the surprise song. Because what if you really hate the surprise song? That's true. Like last weekend, she did jump then fall, and then I would get up. I would jump and then fall to the toilets. At that point, (laughs) literally. And then the other one was something from Red. Like if this was Was a movie or something, or you know you're in love or something like that. Now we're they're gonna be like fake fan. I went to t- Taylor Swift. You- I went to a Taylor Swift concert with digital cameras. Can't even take a straight picture. Like I should show you the picture I have from the- when I went to the Taylor Swift concert. They're like this. Like they're just blurs. It's it is you are in love, but people are gonna call me if it- was it you are in love. Maybe not. That's from 1989. People are gonna be like, you're such a fake fan. Like to me. Yeah, they're gonna be like, give me your Seattle tickets. Yeah. And also she was just like oh wasn't playing anywhere in like a close vicinity of me. So it was just like I don't really want to air travel for this. Yeah, where would be the closest for you? New York? Probably or Boston. Uh is she playing Pittsburgh? <laughs> okay, maybe I am a fake fan. Yeah. <laughs> you don't even know, I don't know if she's playing in Pittsburgh. I don't. Let's see. Okay, just wait. Side note, it was the lucky one. Jump then fall then the lucky mm, one. Yeah. I would have been like 
Like, <laughs> cool. She is playing in, in Pittsburgh. Okay. We'll see. Maybe I'll just get a quick little ticket to that. Yeah, some people are getting, like, day of tickets or, like, you know, weekend before yeah. tickets. And I kind of feel like that's fun. There's so much pressure I feel like riding on this concert like if it's not the best night of my life like I'm gonna be devo yeah and I just don't want to spend like a ton of money which also makes me a fake fan whatever but yeah (laughs) yeah I made 450 dollars on just the ticket with the hotel and the travel and stuff it's gonna be probably like a thousand dollar night oh my god yeah yeah i just my bank yeah and well and like you know every hotel in the area is like jacking up all their prices and oh my god the thought of parking or like lining up i'm 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 turning 32 this year i cannot line up like i used to my concert is four months away and the thought of standing in a lineup actually makes me want to die like I, i i cannot and also I kind of have like crowd anxiety so like I'm hoping I'm gonna be like okay but I I've never the biggest concert I went to was Justin Bieber on the Believe tour in 2012 which was at Rogers Arena so capacity 19,000 like I'm I'm nervous Mm -hmm. for Lumen Field I guess it's good that there's it's like there's no roof maybe that will maybe but I don't know I'm just I'm anxious. I can't stand. Virginia yeah, I'm just like, like, like yeah. or like some of these. Like, I saw some of the TikToks where they're like stood in line at the merch truck for six hours. I'm like, not couldn't be me. Not a chance in hell. Like, do these people no. not have to pee every 25 minutes? Like, what's it I like know, to have the bladder space? I know, I know. Dana, who I'm going with, she was like, I'm gonna go like really early that day to get the blue crew neck I was like I'll be at brunch I don't <laughs> like, like, what I'm gonna wait six hours to pay $85 for a sweatshirt that's gonna get destroyed yeah. after one wash no I know I was like love you but I will be sitting down somewhere this woman has like, gotten enough of our money <laughs> literally okay this was so much fun where can the listeners find you and anything else you want to plug if you like the sound of my voice and wanted to hear more of it well you can hear uh my bachelor cover coverage on the reality tv wrap ups under the rob has a podcast umbrella i'm also podcasting about top chef over there on the same feed and if you want to follow me on twitter and instagram at h strong underscore my instagram's taken a bit of a hit lately uh i'm <laughs> those have not <laughs> found any joy in things so i haven't been posting a whole lot but i do post a lot of food and stuff if that's something you're interested in and i know you have a a big uh a reader girly population here at the ready to yes. Petty podcast uh you can follow everything i am reading at my bookstagram account at the strong library i love that okay you have to come back for our ra episode yeah. but then also i feel like we should do a 1989 like guest just like chat yeah, i'm in because remember when she brought out the u.s girls soccer team or women's yeah. soccer team like, oh my god yeah <laughs> it was oh my actually, god it was actually so we weird. should so I, i'm like yeah we will but i need to look up a list right now oh yeah i know because there's like um there's this one TikTok. I feel like it was like the first TikTok I ever saw. It was like talking about Taylor Swift's 1989 guest. And it was like the witches of like the Salem witch trials. Like yeah. it was so funny. But she had like Adina Menzel. She had oh, all yeah. the Victoria's Secret girlies. Ricky Martin. Oh Pitbull. <laughs> Nellie Goulding. Dwayne Wade. <laughs> Nell- Nellie was the best one. Yeah. Miranda Lambert. Ellie Goulding. Imagine going and like you're person is Allison Krauss like <laughs> it sounds terrible but Steven Tyler Leona Lewis Kelsey Ballerina Avril Lavigne everyone's saying Kelsey Ballerina is gonna be maybe like the April 14th guest uh-huh. but because they're in the same city right. at the same time so I could see that but yeah poor poor you if you attended the national show on September 25th 2015 and <laughs> your, your guest was Allison Krauss no offense that sounds terrible but she's like rock rock royalty yeah. we're like nothing or Sydney Sierra Ser- Sierrota. I don't, don't even know who that is. What a time to be alive. Yeah, her career obviously didn't pop off. Okay, Haley. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, this is super fun. Thanks again for coming on. 
And there you have it. Thank you so much for listening. And thank you to Haley for joining me on today's episode. Once again, I hope you have a really nice weekend. And if you're looking for an escape from family this weekend, check out the Patreon, patreon.com slash RTBP podcast and follow me on socials at RTBP podcast. I'm always posting fun content, memes, TikToks about all of the celebrity gossip that we cover on the show, but sometimes that we don't have time to cover. So I cover it on socials. Okay, friends, I hope you are safe and healthy out there. As always, I'm your host, Tori. And I am ready to be petty. See you soon. Bye.